many bubbles form that they begin to bump into each other, adding to the viscosity of slow-moving toes. The rock it forms can look almost spongy. Bubble-rich toes are several times thicker than dense toes. The stretched tubular bubbles allow light to pass through the glassy skin, giving the surface a bronze tint. As the flows continue to cool, more crystals form and the viscosity increases greatly. Many of the bubbles escape and the remaining ones coalesce into larger bubbles. Bubbles in the interior of these flows are elongated rather than spherical. Stretched and torn bubbles at the surface give these viscous pohoihoi flows a spiny texture. Slow-moving crystal-rich lava tends to form spiny pohoihoi crusts. If the lava moves faster, the crystals in the lava collide and bind, causing the crust to tear and aa -ah to form. The tearing force, called shear stress, plays an important role in determining whether aa -ah or pohoihoi crust forms. How much lava is coming out of the ground, called the effusion rate, how high it goes in the air, and how steep a slope it flows down, all influence the shear stress and the type of lava formed. Lava moving rapidly down a steep slope or in a wide channel is being stressed much more than lava moving slowly on flat ground. The faster lava flows, the more it is being torn and the more likely it is to become aa. -ah. The chemical composition of lava, especially silica content, strongly affects viscosity. Continental basaltic lava flows tend to have higher silica contents and higher viscosities than most Hawaiian lavas. Higher initial viscosities explain why coarse, spiny surfaces are more common on continental pohoihoi flows and why some lavas that erupted onto flat ground produced aa -ah instead of pohoihoi. The change from pohoihoi crust to aa -ah crust as a flow moves down steep slopes and cools is well known. It can easily be seen along this small flow, which initially emerged as pohoihoi and is now forming aa -ah at its front. Aa -ah and pohoihoi flows are defined by their crust, which cannot change once it is formed. However, the fluid lava carried by the channel has neither formed and can change continuously depending on viscosity and shear stress. Some aa -ah flows that slow down when they reach flat ground actually produce pahoihoi flows. Other stagnated aa -ah flows can leak viscous spiny pahoihoi. This aa -ah flow gradually underwent a change to slabby pohoihoi and finally to pohoihoi as it moved onto flat ground. The crust growing over the channel is keeping the lava hot and fluid, so pohoihoi can form at the front of the lava flow. Basaltic eruptions begin as fissures, which erupt enormous amounts of lava. Because the volume of lava is widely distributed over a half mile or more of vents, many of the flows move slowly and initially form pohoihoi. As a fissure eruption progresses, 
Small spatter cones and ridges, called spatter ramparts, build along the sides of the vents. If the eruption lasts long enough, generally a few weeks or months, the site of eruptive activity will localize to a single vent. Forcing the lava out through a single narrow vent creates a nozzle effect, like putting your finger over the end of a garden hose. Sporadic eruptions from these narrow vents create spectacular high fountains that can spray lava up to 2,000 feet into the air. When lava ponds within the cone, the hoi hoi flows typically form near the vent. As they move away from the vent and cool or encounter steeper slopes, the pahoehoe -hoi flows change to a ah flows. After many high fountain events, Hawaiian eruptions produce large craterless cones when lighter material piles up on the downwind side of the vent. At Craters of the Moon, many of the vents were formed by Hawaiian-style fountaining and are marked by large asymmetric hills of cinder with no apparent crater or vent. Sustained eruptions with low effusion rates form gently sloping shield volcanoes. Repeated overflows of pohoihoi coat and recoat the surface of the shields. Overflows within a mile or so of shields and lava lakes produce another variant of lava called Shelly Pahoy Hoy. These flows have a relatively thick yet remarkably flexible crust that detaches from the underlying molten lava and folds into billowy forms with hollow interiors. Shelly Pahoy Hoy lava is full of bubbles and is more than 50% gas by volume. Gas escaping from the molten interior creates even more hollow space beneath the buckled crust. On flatter ground, Shelly Pohoyhoy can pile up into thick stacks of flat crustal plates. Repeated eruptions of fluid lava can build enormous shield volcanoes. Mauna Loa, the world's largest volcano, rises nearly 30,000 feet above the surrounding seafloor. Eruptions of more viscous basaltic lava produce pulsating strombolian explosions. The higher viscosity is due to either the original magma composition or to cooling in the magma chamber prior to eruption. Gases cannot easily escape from the sticky lava and accumulate until large bubbles form and burst from the vent. Strombolian eruptions are powerful and make a lot more fine ash than Hawaiian eruptions. The individual blasts toss dense cinder and bombs which are not strongly affected by regional wind patterns. Strombolian eruptions construct beautiful circular cones with central craters. Some cinder cones have a distinct horseshoe shape that is produced when cinder lands on the active lava river exiting the vent and is swept away. Strombolian eruptions strongly favor the formation of Aa flows, like these large sheets of Aa surrounding Bandera Crater. Hidden beneath the surface of many lava flows are long sinuous caves called lava tubes. When the flows are active, the tubes are incandescent and filled by a stream of lava.
Drained lava tubes and old flows make caves that are often easy to explore because of their high ceilings and gently sloping floors. The formation of tubes allows lava to travel long distances while remaining very fluid. The roof is an excellent insulator, allowing lava to maintain temperatures in excess of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit over many miles of travel. Lava tubes commonly start out as open channels in either Pahoehoe or Aa flows. The channels begin to cool from the sides. A thin crust of rock will gradually grow out from the edges across the channel, much like ice on a river. Rafts of crust can also clog up the center of the narrowing channel, helping to make a solid roof. Here we're watching the flexible crust growing across the surface of a channel in fast motion. Bits of viscous lava catch and stick to the edges and bottom of the crust. Crustal growth rates vary greatly on different channels, depending on the speed of the flow. Faster flows tend to tear up the crust as it forms, so it takes longer to grow. Smaller, slower flows may develop a thicker but still flexible crust. It rolls up along the sides and in the center, eventually solidifying into an arch with a ropey textured surface. Early on, the roof is only inches thick but it continues to thicken from underneath as more lava catches and cools. Eventually, thickening crust can constrict the flow of lava beneath it. This causes lava to back up inside and burst out in places. These new surface flows then bury the rest of the tube, making the roof even thicker. After a tube has been sealed over for several weeks, the lava river inside begins to thermally erode the ground beneath it. Lava is so hot that the underlying rock will soften and partially melt, allowing it to be scraped away by the powerful force of the flowing lava. Small ledges on the walls of tubes record the lava levels as erosion proceeds downward. The shape of a lava tube depends a lot on how long it was active. Original channels tend to be wide and shallow, but ultimately erosion carves them deeper. Tubes that were active for only a few days tend to leave behind wide and shallow caves, while those active for more than a few weeks become larger caves with a rounded profile. Some lava tubes have a keyhole shape that shows both the original wide channel at the top and a deeper, narrower bottom. Lava tube systems vary from simple to complex. The amount of interweaving is a result of the original paths of the surface flows. Lava channels may be straight, meandering, or even braided. While not all of the channels will form long-lived tubes, those that do can create branching underground caves. The roof of a lava tube can become weakened and collapse, forming a skylight and allowing cooler air into the tube. Lava passing under skylights cools and forms new crust.
thick ledges emerge from tube walls. With time, an inner roof forms beneath large skylights, building multiple levels along sections of a tube. Partial blockages of tubes force lava to the surface as new flows, creating complicated systems of stacked lava tubes. The overflows can even re-enter the original tube system farther down slope. Intense heat inside the tubes creates a wide range of textures by melting the outer layers of the walls and roof. Molten rock may form drips from the ceiling or ooze slowly down the walls. Release of pressure in the tube, which happens when a block tube breaks open or drains, drives water-rich melt from the tube walls, extruding little buds. Molten lava forced from the ceiling forms soda straw stalactites. These hollow tubes form as the lava reacts with hot air to form a metallic crust. The straw grows with each drip of melt. Splashing lava at the base of falls can freeze into drips and lava sickles along the walls. Shark's tooth textures, seen here, are also drips left behind when the lava level was higher. Other stalactites are formed by lava that catches on walls or drags along projections from the wall or roof. Rocks falling into the lava stream or brought up during the eruption may get swept away and roll around in the lava. They are often left behind as rounded boulders with a thin coating of smooth lava on the surface. When an eruption ends, lava drains from the tubes, which slowly cool. Many big collapses in the tube system happen during this time, within just a few days of the lava flow ending. Once they are cooled, collapsed parts of the tubes often make moist protected areas where ferns and mosses can grow. They can carry water or even ice year round. Lava tubes were recognized long ago as valuable resources for people crossing or even living in harsh volcanic landscapes. From ancient explorers to modern scientists, the intense power and strange beauty of erupting volcanoes and flowing lava continue to capture our imagination and excite our sense of exploration. <laughs>